Mackey story doesn't add up, of course. By Colin Liddell. Douglas Mackey, aka Ricky Vaughn, has now been convicted and could face up to 10 years in prison for the crime of election interference. Isn't almost everything election interference in one way or another? Anyway, here's the basic narrative now running in the press, this from the New York Daily News. Quote. A federal jury on Friday convicted pro-Trump troll Douglas Mackey of plotting to trick voters out of casting a ballot during the 2016 presidential election. The case, which sought to address if any of the toxic stew of internet disinformation during the 2016 election rose to the level of a crime, has been closely watched by both anti-extremist groups and right-wing politicians and pundits. Mackey, 33, of West Palm Beach, Florida, who gained fame on the internet as the Twitter user Ricky Vaughn, posted two images made to look like fake Hillary Clinton ads telling people they could vote by text instead of in person. Federal prosecutors called the images part of a plot to disenfranchise black and women voters, but Mackey insisted that he was simply shitposting and sharing ridiculous memes. End quote. Troll or crime? Plus my free speech plus a race angle. Nice. The dividing point here seems to be between those who think Mackey was trolling or doing satire when he posted the fake infographics and those that think he was trying to stop people voting. The jury obviously thought the latter. The humorous content of the meme is in the obviously racist idea that some black voters may be so mentally deficient that they could be easily tricked out of their vote. In other words, the meme was an attempt to deprive black voters of their vote, a crime, so therefore it was kind of funny, not normally a crime. Would we be here if the meme had been directed at white or Asian voters? Mackey's actions are only criminal if you secretly think that a significant portion of black people can be easily tricked out of voting correctly. But, while this narrative has plenty to keep people busy, I don't think it's the real story. This is not really about race or normal Americans rubbing each other up the wrong way. It is about something much deeper than that, with the emphasis on deep. It should be clear by now, to those who have been paying attention, that there were quite a few things odd about the 2016 election. I, and some others, have already detailed several of the smoking guns that point to Kremlin connections with the alt-right, who, in 2015 and 16, served wittingly or unwittingly as a major mimetic fifth column for Kremlin interests. And these are only the smoking guns. You can also be sure that plenty of smokeless guns played their part as well. Then, there are various phenomena like WikiLeaks, actually Kremlin leaks, and the baseless and tedious Pizzagate nonsense, concocted out of aspects of elite culture, like dodgy art collections, third world charity work, and various in-jokes, supposedly revealed by the WikiLeaks. Using the Alex Jones-affiliated conspiratardo sphere and useful idiots, like my old friend Andy Nowicki, this was spun into a supposed network of Western pedo elites running the world. All these things were done to skew the 2016 election in the direction of Donald Trump as a possible anti-neocon and then simply as a disruption candidate. As someone at the center of the alt-right at the time, I noticed all the odd patterns in real time and had disagreements, disputes, and occasional agreements with other major figures who didn't and got carried away in the moment. But it wasn't all one-way traffic. The Washington Deep State soon found ways of fighting back against the Moscow Deep State to emasculate the Trump presidency and then to fortify the COVID election of 2020. In fact, the only way to think of the 2016 election and its aftermath is as a deep state on deep state affair with two entities engaged in fourth generation warfare. Read up on it sometime. This is the correct context in which to view Mackey's case. Also, this is another reason why the US deep state is now going to town on TikTok. Don't expect to see the 4G warfare or deep state aspects of the Mackey case mentioned too much in the popular press.
Although, in the weeks and months ahead, we may see carefully written thought pieces in the higher IQ media that touch on the subject.